The Vogue in Washington has been for everybody to say they've been asked and everybody to say there's no way I would do it in a million. If you were to believe all the people who've commented, then they wouldn't have a cast, but we know they have a cast. In fact, there's some members of the cast in the room, but we won't point them out. Ah, where could they be? But we do have a cast, but, um, but the Vogue has been, oh, no, not me. And I wonder to some extent if Washington's capable of having the required sense of humor to carry this off. You know, crews have been banned from going into buildings. There have been parties where they've said, oh, we're not going to let the Real Housewives in, which I think is sort of disingenuous. But, but did you have to deal with that kind of... Uh, Season one was fairly easy to film because... Nobody knew what it was. We were Manhattan moms, um, and, you know, Jersey hadn't come along, Atlanta hadn't come along. I think that's probably a bigger challenge uh, for new franchises as they develop around the rest of the country. Because it's becoming something of a monster. Well, monster not just in size, but in also, you know... Reputation. Honestly, you know, if, if I was being cast for a show now, knowing what I know, would I have been as eager to do it as I was three but years ago? But you haven't ago? upended a table since you've been here today. And, <laughs> and that's the thing, and that's the thing that we're struggling with as we produce uh, our, our third season. We cannot and will not compete with Atlanta. We're a very different show. We are very different people. What you know, I might have different. Have you met them? No. That's do you the want one to? Um, no. Who do not you really. want to? No. Who do you want to meet from the other shows? If you could only meet one, uh, Gretchen, Nini. No, Gretchen. I wish you could see his face. Um, <laughs> you'll have to watch. On, you have to on watch. Yes. Yeah. No. I, um, Gina, who will be leaving the OC. Well, I have met Gina. I, I, I have met. I didn't know she was leaving OC, here. That's, that, that's announced. Oh, okay. That's, yeah, no, All I, right. I'm very careful. Basically, not, there's very few things I'll trouble. say that I haven't, that aren't already in the public domain. Um, but Gretchen, who leaves OC, uh, sorry, mm. Gina, who leaves OC5 this year, she is a genuinely nice lady. Um, Vicky, I've spoken to for three seconds, and Vicky is woohoo as much as she is on TV as she seems in, in, in when you meet her. Um, Hold on, who was the one who left season three? Vicky? No. Oh, I don't remember. I'm yeah, amazed anyway. I even remember the names the OC, I remember. I mean, each city, uh, look, honestly, I would have thought that, we, that the New York cast will have more in common with whoever is cast on the DC show than any of the other three franchises that have been on air to date. Well, it'll, it'll be interesting. It'll be interesting. What, what advice would you give the Washington cast from your two seasons now, two and a half of experience? Enjoy the ride. Don't, you know, you're making entertainment television. This is not rocket science. This is not a documentary. It is fun. Uh, look, you know, get a thick skin very quickly. You'll get that anyway, because if you don't, you'll go crazy. Um, and enjoy it. You know, it, you have to be crazy to do a show like this. You really have to be. There, crazy. you finally said it. <laughs> no, no, yeah. but uh, good have, crazy, yeah, good absolutely. crazy. You, and you have to expose, you, you are exposing yourself to, uh, you know, it's not just it's not just doing reality programs that you get exposed to this. I mean, Tina Fey when she accepted a, 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 an Emmy or something nine months ago, mm -hmm. read, read off the eight or ten names of, of the pseudonyms of people who attack her on the internet, and she goes and reads them when she wants to come back down to earth. Whenever anyone is in the public eye, um, you are going to be criticised. Yeah. On a show like ours, where you are seen, when any snippets of your life are seen, and some of the worst ones are seen, um, you will get criticised. But Brush all that aside, the, the, the benefits so far have outweighed the negatives, Yeah. Um, I think. We still have two very young children. As they get older, but we'll let, have to re Let's talk that. about the children for mm. a second. Because um, there was just the incident of Balloon Boy, where this family, so eager, allegedly so eager to get into reality TV, sets up their children in a way to get all this national attention. And uh, I wonder what that says about how far the reality phenomenon has gone. But how did you weigh the appropriateness of having your children have such a prominent role in this show, especially at such young ages where they don't intellectually understand it? Because they don't really, I mean, at the age that you know, Francois was, so they were all, uh, at the end of season one, they had just turned two and four. Mm -hmm. um, and they were really not aware of what they were doing. We, we, in season two, we cut them out a lot more. You know, we learned to never allow them to go on camera at 9.30 at night when they were overtired. And anyone knows that a child at 
but there were three Bravo and a half. Of course, Bravo probably wanted you to give them chocolate and then put them on camera. Well, look, there was also <laughs> another scene in season one, a very bad scene that I wish we hadn't have done, where you see Alex looking at the Sunday time, at the New York Times Sunday se section to see if her photo was in the paper. You know, that scene was actually filmed at four o'clock in the afternoon. It was going to be breakfast. Well, you know, to get the boys to sit at the table, they had some jelly beans. So, you know, we've got two <laughs> kids hooked on candy. Apparently, at, you know, as far as you're aware, the audience is aware at 8 a.m. in the morning. You learn, you learn the ropes. We, you know, season two, we were much wiser than we were in season one. And honestly, they were at an age where it didn't really matter. Um, they obviously can't read, or they then couldn't read what was written about them on the internet. But they're school age now, aren't they? Now they're school age now. Now it's a lot of fun. Um, my biggest concern would be when they're 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, you know, going into puberty, that's when, and you know, I've seen some awful things written about the children of other cast members, mm -hmm. and, they, and I know that they're reading it themselves, and you know, we talk about how we deal with it. I mean, that's, that's the other thing with the show. It doesn't matter how much difference we have with the various members of the cast, at the end of the day, we have all gone through this really warped shared experience where we can empathize with each other. It's, it's, you know, I might hate Ramona in season two, but I empathize with- But you don't really hate her. You hate her for reality TV. No, 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 no. I, 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 I can genuinely say that uh, throughout the two seasons, there has been nothing in my relationships with the rest of the cast that has been forced or manufactured for the show. The, the night, the Page Six magazine party in season two where I walked off calling her a hypocrite and Mario, that was a night that when Alex and I arrived at that party, I said to the producers, we are dog tied. They were in the middle of our house renovation. Um, you know, she had a full-time job, I had a full-time job at that stage. Um, and I said, we're here, we'll go on camera, but expect nothing. And that was the night that Mario almost poked Jill's eye out over the, the stupid tennis match. And then I went over to console Mario, and then Ramona turns up, and you know we were having a normal conversation, and then the conversation just naturally took an arc. But you actually aren't always together like that that often, are you? Now we try not to be. When yeah. we're not filming, we try not to be because it actually then, you know, as the seasons have gone on, it's you need very to save important. it for the camera. Well, because it, it mustn't become contrived. I think once once the show becomes contrived then it, it's no longer real. Do they offer you group counseling after some of your dust-ups? No. No? There's no, no, there's no, little, not, there's no little off camera sit down where not everybody joins hands and no. sings Kumbaya? You think so? No. Well, I just wondered. <laughs> I mean, because, you know, there's all these, you know, the, 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 the rumors or the myths or whatever they are, are that it's scripted, that, you, it, like, for example, when they were casting the Washington show, there was a woman who was supposedly going to be in the cast, and then the scuttlebutt was that they decided that she would not have it in her to upend tables and pitch fits and have fights. Now, I don't know if that's true, but it certainly sounds like good gossip, doesn't it? I think as the franchises have grown, the expectation from Bravo is also growing. Um, so those the, you know, the shows that have seen come what after works, ours, right? But, but then there's also not just the raw ratings. I mean, Atlanta has just finished their second series with mm -hmm. record-breaking ratings, and that segued last Thursday into the first episode of season five of the OC, which has also had record-breaking ratings. Each so far, each franchise has built off the, the previous mm -hmm. one, um, and also the Atlanta ratings. While headline numbers were great the demographics of who's watching the show is not necessarily what the advertisers are after. You know, the, in the New York franchise, for our season two, which didn't rate as well as Atlanta season two, had a much, from what we believe and have heard, had a much higher, uh, better demographic as far as advertisers.